All right, everyone, welcome to the options part of this masterclass. This is where we're going to actually learn how to trade options. So you've learned a lot about trading penny stocks and normal stocks in this market, but there's another type of trading that is extremely lucrative and arguably my favorite way to trade, and that is by trading options. In short, options can be less risky, more profitable, and have way more opportunities every single day than normal stocks. And this is why I absolutely love trading options. Now, understand that this isn't going to be a com you're not going to master options after you watch these uh, the rest of this course on trading options, right? You're not going to be the best options trader ever. There's just a ton of definitions. There's a ton of terms that you need to learn, which is why people think options are so, so scary, which hint, hint, they're really not that you need, but you do need to learn these terms. So we're going to be going over all of these terms, how to use these terms, some simple strategies to trading options. And by the end of this course here, you're going to have a pretty good understanding on everything to do with options. From there, you just need to apply it and that is when you're gonna come into the private discord community and start to take a look at all the option information that we have in here so we actually have four full-time trading analysts trading options every single day of the week doc is the house the lead option trader here and he is absolutely amazing with literally an 80 to 90 percent win ratio every single day of the week calling option trades we also have zabs habibi and chuck fu all absolutely fantastic option traders. So these are the guys you're going to be want to be following along with in the private discord community. Once you get the hang of it, you can take some of these trades in a paper account first until you get the full swing of things. Once you're pretty profitable, move over to live trading if you feel comfortable and start doing it for real. And we also go live every single morning around 9 a.m. going over charts and actually trading options when we see them. So tons of opportunities to trade options in the private Discord community. But if you take a look at some of Doc's calls here, if you take a look in the live trading classes, you may be a bit confused. And that is where this course is going to come into play to teach you all of the basics and the terms that you need to know with trading options. So let's get into it. And part one here is going to be option trading for beginners. So what are call options what are put options and what on earth is an option right so let's get into it so a couple basic definitions here an options is basically a form of derivative contract that gives the buyer of the contracts the option holders the right but not the obligation to sell to buy or sell a security at a chosen price at some point in the future option buyers are charged an amount called a premium by the sellers for such a right so like i said all these terms are going to sound extremely complicated there's going to be this what seems like so many moving parts when it all comes down to it they're really not that complicated and once you get the hang of it is it is extremely easy Basically, an option options are contracts. They're literally contracts that buyers and sellers trade back and forth to each other. Okay, and the contracts are basically your right, um, you know, your but not the obligation to buy or sell a hundred shares of the underlying security. So that's why options are so powerful because like buying a hundred shares of Tesla stock would cost you a ton of money where you can have essentially a contract that you're right to control a hundred shares of this stock. You can buy an option contract on that for a much cheaper price, right? So I know it's a little bit hard to understand, but it's basically a contract that gives you the right to buy or sell 100 shares of the underlying security, which is obviously already a much cheaper way to get in to controlling such a large amount of shares. And the money that you actually pay for these contracts, well, those are going to be what's called the premium. That's the premium that you're actually going to pay. So uh, yeah, let's move on here. So options are generally divided into call and put contracts right and we are going to stick with the basics in this in this course because that's the majority of what we do in the discord we do basic option trading there is so many different fancy ways to trade options buying multiple contracts at different times it spreads so many different things when it comes to trading options we're going to keep it very simple and really mainly focus on buying calls and buying puts I'll also tell you a little bit about selling calls and selling puts, but mainly we're going to focus here on buying calls and buying puts, right? And so as you can see with a call option, the buyer of the contract uh, purchases the right to buy the underlying asset in the future at a, a predetermined price called the strike price, right? So basically a call option, here's the, here's the difference. You got a call option, you got a put option. A call option is you betting on the stock that you want it to go up. 
So if you buy your uh, you buy an option contract, a call contract on Tesla, and the price of Tesla goes up, your call contract is going to go up. Those calls are going to make you money, right? So calls are for betting on the stock going up, buying calls, right? In buying puts, are you betting on the stock wanting to go down? Which is extremely nice because you can trade both directions. So if you think Tesla's going to go down and you don't want to have a margin account and have fancy uh, uh, short positions and high leverage on tra on uh, shorting stocks, then ultimately you can buy a put on Tesla. Put contracts. Extremely easy to buy a put contract. That is you betting on the stock going down. So if you buy puts on Tesla, say you buy it for you know a $300 contract, that's your right to control 100 shares of the stock, a put contract, a seller sells you that, and then ultimately uh, Tesla's stock price goes down, well, you're going to make money on those put options, and then you can sell them, you can do whatever you want with them, right? Uh, now, the important part is, is there is a strike prices and expiration dates, which we're going to go over uh, immensely in the next couple of lessons here. But for one, you need an expiration date when trading options. So you're buying a certain date. So basically, you're going to say, uh, I think the price of Tesla is going to go down, you know, by this date, right? And I'm going to show you different strategies, but there's always a date that you need to pick, right? So, you know, by the next Friday, by the next Friday, by the next Friday, those are when you're going to, when your option contract is actually going to expire. And, uh, you, you know, I'll teach you what it, what happens when you hold to expiration, expiring worthless, all those terms. But what most people do is they uh, sell them back, right? So ultimately, I'm going to buy this call contract because I think Tesla's, this is how you keep options simple, right? Without holding them till expiration and, and, and uh, rolling over and all these other terms, right? If I think Tesla's going to go up, I'm going to buy a call contract on them for out two weeks. So the expiration is going to be two weeks from the day. And I'm going to show you how to do all this. I'm going to buy that call contract, right? And uh, But I'm not going to hold it for the entire two weeks. If Tesla goes up over the next three or four days, I'm just going to sell that option contract for a higher price than what I paid for it, right? Because it's going to be worth more now at that point in time, now that Tesla has gone up. That call contract is now going to be worth more. If I think Tesla's going to go down, I'm going to buy puts on them two weeks out. You know, if I think Tesla's going to, if I'm in, the, I guess the majority of option trading is reading charts. So if I think Tesla is going to go down here because of the chart setup that I see over the next couple of days, I'm going to buy a put contracts two weeks out. Expiration date, two weeks out. I'm going to buy those put contracts. If Tesla does what it's supposed to do and it goes down over the three or four day period, I am going to sell those contracts and they're now going to be worth more. And hey, if Tesla goes up when I have put contracts, and I'm down. I'm going to set my stop loss. I'm going to cut my losses. All the all the same stuff when it comes to selling stocks, right? So keep it very, very simple when trading options. And this is how, you know, you, you can uh, not get involved with all the crazy terms at least right away. So hopefully that start, that's starting to make sense. One, you need to have, uh, or, or call options is you betting on the stock wanting to go up. And put options is you betting on the stock to go down. You also need to have an expiration date when you buy these uh, when you buy these contracts, right? An expiration date, and you can and probably will be selling them before the expiration date, hopefully at a higher price. If not, you're going to cut those losses. Also, understand that options mainly revolves around technical analysis for the most part. So you're reading those charts like the entire TA section, and then you're going to uh, apply that into actually buying and selling call uh, call or put options. Okay. So that's uh, that should uh, that should help you. So options trading may sound risky or complex for beginner investors, and so they often stay away. Some basic strategies for trading options can really help uh, novice investors protect their downside and hedge market risks. Option trading can be complex, so of course you need to understand the risks, risks and reward before diving in. That's exactly why we're having this course, but we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. Now. So we really just explained this, but let's take a look here. I'm going to show you some real examples. Buying calls. You should already know what buying calls is. That's you betting on the stock wanting to go up. There are some advantages to trading options for those looking to make a directional bet in the market. If you think the price of an asset will rise, you can buy a call option. And ultimately, it's going to cost you less capital than the uh, asset itself because you're going to be buying your right to control 100 shares. And it's going to be way less than what it would actually cost you to buy 100 shares. And it's going to be much higher. It's, it's not actual leverage, but leverage trading, essentially. Because guess what? If Tesla does go up, your contract price is going to go up so much faster than each individual share. 
that is such the advantage of trading options. And that's why I love them. And really, I tell almost everyone, you know, I highly recommend you learn how to trade options. It can truly be the bread and butter of your trading career and save penny stocks when there's opportunities because there's not always opportunities. But the fact that you can play both ends, betting on the stock going up and down extremely easily makes options a amazing, amazing, amazing strategy. Now, your losses are going to be limited to what you actually paid for that contract and no more. So if you pay $200 for the contract, that's the maximum that you can lose. It cannot be any more, which is amazing, right? Um, nevertheless, you're going to be probably selling way before that, uh, having your 10% stop losses, all that good stuff. So you don't use the, lose the entire investment, but the fact is you can only lose what you put in, which is great. Scroll down here. Options are essentially leveraged inter instruments that, uh, they allow traders to amplify the potential upside benefit by using smaller amounts than would otherwise be required if trading the underlying asset itself. So this is exactly what I've been saying. Instead of laying out $10,000 to buy 100 shares of a $100 stock, you could hypothetically spend $2,000, honestly, way less than that, depending on expiration dates, depending on strike prices, which we're going to get to. But you may even be able to buy that contract for $300 uh, on a call contract with a strike price 10% higher than the current market price, right? And so that's you betting on the stock to go up instead of buying $10,000 worth, which most people probably don't even have that to buy that hundred dollars. You can buy a contract, which is your right to hold those hundred shares. And if the stock goes up 120, $110 per share, you're going to be making money. You're going to sell those. You're going to take your profit and you're going to move on to the next play, right? So that is what is so good about these trading options. Here's an example. Suppose a trader wants to invest $5,000 in Apple, trading at around $165 per share. With this amount, they can purchase 30 shares for $4,950, right? Suppose that the price of the stock increases by 10% to $181 over the next month. Ignoring any commissions or anything like that, uh, their portfolio will rise to $5,445, leaving the trader with a net dollar return of $495 or 10%. So that is when you just buy a normal stock. Now watch what happens when you would buy a, a, a call option on that. So now let's actually take a look at the option contract for the same situation. Now let's say a call option on the stock with a strike price of $165 that expires about a month from now costs $5.50 per share or $550 per contract. Given the trader's available investment budget, they can buy nine of these contracts, right? So they're going to be able to buy nine option contracts for a total cost of $9,000 uh, $4,950. Because the option contract controls 100 shares, the trader is effectively making a deal on 900 shares of the stock because they have nine 100 share contracts, essentially, right? So if the stock price increases 10%, to $181.50 uh, at expiration, the option will expire in the money. Don't worry. We're going to cover in the money and out of the money. And it's going to be worth $1,650, $1,650 or $1,650 per share here. So for a uh, $181.50 to $165 strike or $14,850 on 900 shares, essentially, right? That's a net dollar return of $9,990 or 200% on the capital investment, a much larger return compared to trading the underlying asset directly. So as you guys can see how much faster option contracts will actually move and they can just make you so much more money if the same thing happens. I guess the downside is, is that, uh, you know, as fast as option contracts will go up, they can also go down just as fast. So they move much, much quicker, which sometimes can make them more risky if you don't have proper risk management in place. But overall, as long as you have that proper risk management, I think uh, I think they can be safer because there's so many more opportunities, but also they can be so much more profitable. Now, the trader's potential loss from a, a long call, like I said, is only limited to the premium paid. The potential profit, though, is absolutely unlimited because, uh, you, know, you know, hypothetically speaking, uh, Apple or whatever stock we're trading here, it could literally go up forever, making that potential gain unlimited, right? So that's what is great about trading options. There's really no theoretical limit on how high it can go. Buying puts, very similar situation. You are betting on the stock going down 
right? So if you are bearish on a stock, you are going to buy puts on that stock in the same type of situation. So let's go through an example. Say that you think the price of a stock is likely to decline from $60 to $50 or lower based on bad earnings, but you don't want to risk selling the stock short in case you are wrong. Instead, you can buy the $50 put for a premium of $2. If the stock does not fall below $50 or if it indeed it rises, the most you will lose is the $2 premium. However, if you are uh, if you are right and the stock drops all the way down to $45, you will make $3, $50 uh, minus the $45, less the $2 premium. So the potential uh, loss on a put is going to be limited to the premium paid. The maximum profit from the position is going to be capped because the, the stock could technically not fall down to zero, right? So that is uh, that is pretty much the situation there. So it's essentially the same way as buying those puts there. I really don't like the way they explain it here. But nevertheless, it's, it's the same situation as buying calls. You're just buying puts. You're betting on the stock going down. Same situation. You can make money very, very quick. But at the same time, you can... Uh, you can also lose money quick if the stock goes in the wrong direction, right? So uh, it, it, there's it, it's leverage, right? There's so much more leverage you can use while trading options, which is exactly why a lot of people like it. Now, we're not going to talk about some of these more advanced strategies, at least not yet. Right now, we just want to stick to buying calls and buying puts. The reality is it is very easy to buy a put instead of selling a stock short, which is much more complicated. Uh, so that is why I like trading puts as well. But regardless, that should give you guys a basic understanding of options and what it is like to buy a call option and buy a put option. Now we got to talk about all different things. What expiration date should I be buying? What is a strike price? What are all these different numbers? What are the Greeks? Let's get into the rest of this course.